This is Movies, a podcast by the Active Cinema. And with me today, in his finest uh, sweater, he was bragging about it just before coming on the show, is Hans. Hans, how are you tonight? Hey, you're a movie star now, huh? I'm. It's, it's so weird to see him because I didn't feel fat when I was up there. And then I see that short and it's like, look at those cheeks. Look at those rosy, chubby cheeks. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's you're gotten... quite skinnier now. I mean, honestly, I don't want to say anything. I don't want to, you know, put a put this into the viewers' minds. But uh, in some of the the shots for Mass State Lottery, we had to get tricky during reshoots because it's very, you know, if a lot of you guys have seen Zack Snyder's Justice League, you'll notice that Ben Affleck's got his like alcohol bloat face, and then his yeah. I'm sober now face, and it's a lot trimmer. And you see yeah. him at the end, and he's like a hundred pounds lighter, and it doesn't match with every other scene in the film and that's a bit of what we did with hans that's actually an homage to zack snyder's <laughs> justice league yeah. so uh yes you're quite skinnier now you were a little little pudgy yeah yeah i was i did the alcoholism thing just for that for that uh tribute to ben affleck and then just had you deal with it with uh tricky lighting i guess no what i did was uh for all the shots of mass state lottery where you're fat what i did was just stretch the frame abnormally that's nice uh quick it's fix mm -hmm. it's a fever dream exactly hey we've got mario back with us for yet another episode uh how are you doing tonight mario hello boys i'm great i love the short it's fantastic oh thank you thank you and a uh congratulations to hans yes yeah. hans you're gonna have some awards buzz I, i'm hearing it's the best performance of 2023 so oh, I was talking about the uh, the engagement. Oh, yeah, I guess that's all right, too. That's oh, right. Yeah. Thank you. I, I, nice forgot, <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, Hans, the way that you phrased it in the group chat when you told uh, Jerry and myself about this is that uh, you got engaged, which made it sound like your girlfriend proposed to you. Is that the case? Yeah. No, I was just a little intoxicated. And <laughs> when I got intoxicated, my English and Spanish kind of mixed. Uh, so yeah. but that's you not what happened somewhere, uh, you do it somewhere cool yeah yeah we went to this to this uh airbnb with like a nice city view and alcohol it was nice it was very Wonderful. uncharacteristic of me i guess <laughs> which is why she wasn't expecting it but yeah that's cool uh, i think what we've been seeing throughout the arc of the show is your gradual escalation to just being like a real human being being yeah. a real person <laughs> um and not just a cynical evil online guy <laughs> uh which is what many people have assumed for many years yeah yeah it all started uh, with that politics show we used to do I, you always just... bring this up i have no memory of the politics <laughs> show, personally i just try to piss people off in it and then slowly i've just you know become a nice boy watching christmas movies and liking them was expecting that at mm. all that's on my list now I was, I was debating putting two christmas movies in this list and i was like i don't know if i should do that you do, you do go after uh the politicians serious. you do you do get after them on twitter hans yeah you you still do that so you oh, haven't you haven't changed that much spiritually <laughs> but hold on all right so we're we're doing our best films watched in 2022 list for this program and you have two christmas films on it well, I, yeah, I, I, I thought I did. I just changed one of them, but uh, yeah, from last month oh. that I had never seen before. You know oh. my story with Christmas movies. I yeah. only seen like five, <laughs> so a couple that we actually covered both of them. I was debating adding both. Okay, all right. Well, that's interesting, um, Mario. I don't even know if you have a list, but do you have Christmas films in in your? in your uh, uh, filmography here that you might be presenting this evening? Uh, nothing that I saw for the first time this year that I think is, could be uh, Christmas related in any, in any way. I don't Perfect. Know. Okay. I, well. No, no, none for me. Oh, well, all right. I have a Christmas tree up in my background, uh, but I, there are no uh, Christmas movies on my list. So how, how do you guys want to kick this off? So, do you either of you need to buy time a little bit to yeah, come me, up with a concrete? A, give me a couple okay. of minutes. All right. Uh, well, I have some films that are not in my top ten. I think Hans and Mario here might be presenting five movies. Mm -hmm. And Hans, I, maybe you've got. I, I know you said you started with eight that you felt good about. So if you yeah. want to rattle off the other three or something, um, 
I will I will start with some of mine and then maybe we can get into yours. So I think we'll wind up doing five, five, and five. Because that's 15 movies. Otherwise, we're talking about potentially up to 30 films. That's a very long show. Those types of shows go far, far longer than what someone might expect. So here are some that did not make my top 10. Okay, I'm just going to breeze through these. And then I'm also going to breeze through probably 10 through 6, maybe. We'll see. Uh, All That Jazz. That's the Bob Fosse film that uh, preceded Star 80. I thought that movie was uh, terrific. Annie Hall, that was another movie I just watched for the first time this past year. Uh, Heaven's Gate, Michael Cimino, which this is kind of a a cheat here because I did watch it in 2020 or so, and I maybe half paid attention to it. But then I sat down and I actually paid attention to it kind of recently, and I have this massive uh, two VHS box set. And again, I cited you, Mario, as... The reason why I've gotten back into videotapes here. Look at how inconvenient this is. They put this out in like 1983. These giant ass boxes that have the tape at the center. And it's the exact duplicate art. And it takes up so much space on your shelf. I don't don't have any of those. They're fun to to find. Um, I've got one for Pope of Greenwich Village and Year of the Dragon as well. But for a movie like Heaven's Gate, where it's over three hours long. It's like, come on. Uh, We've got... Yeah, well, that one, that one was when they decided to drop the big box style. So it's just a double double VHS box set. That's a little more concise. Uh, a Christmas Carol from 1938. That could have been uh, in my top ten, maybe. Chameleon Street. That was a pretty good movie. Uh, Another Woman. That was a Woody Allen film with Mia Farrow and Jenna Rollins. And number eleven, Highlander. I have not seen Highlander until this past year. I thought Highlander was a terrific, fun movie. So those are my 17 through 11 picks. And Hans, if you want to do the three that are getting left out of your top five. Okay, so uh, since i rather pick one Christmas movie instead of two, I guess Scrooge would get kicked out of that top five. Uh, that was a lot of fun. That was very, um, very not what I was expecting. Uh, especially because I'm not used to to that type of a feel-good, even though, is it a feel-good movie? I don't, I don't know. Hmm. No, he nothing really. No, he doesn't no, change it's not, it, right? man. No, he's still kind of a piece of shit, but it was it was uh, really entertaining, and it shows, I think, uh, the best of Bill Murray from the 80s. So I really enjoyed that. Uh, Sputnik was a movie from 2020 that I had not seen until this year. So an alien Russian movie. Uh Pretty good effects, decent story, um, and uh, I think that's it. I I've, I saw Life Force from Beyond and Brain Scan this year because I wanted to go and, and get into those '80s sci-fi weird but not great movies. But I, mm-hmm. I don't think I would put that on on my list. Uh, but I think seven should be good enough. <laughs> okay, I haven't heard yeah. of any of those last three movies. Oh, really? Yeah, from beyond is based on a it's based on a Lovecraft story, I think, uh, and it it has uh, Barbara Crampton and Jeffrey Combs in it. It's very good. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, Life Force is a Toby Hooper movie. Oh right, I, yeah, no, no, no. Uh, does that have Sean Connery in it? No, Patrick Stewart. Patrick Stewart. That's right. Yeah. Okay. And then Brain Scan is a movie with Edward Furlong and Frank Langella. Edward Furlong. An Edward yeah. Furlong movie made your top 10? Damn, no, I want to cast just... <laughs> Edward Furlong so bad as Brian Peppers. I want to do a Brian Peppers movie with Edward yeah, that would, Furlong. That would be insane. Uh, I was, I've been talking about this idea of doing this for ages with um, William Kyle Girardi, who directed The Perfect Wife, and he's very ill right now. If anybody has a free kidney, he's looking rough. He needs no. some help, so please go. If you've got a spare kidney to give... Go contact William Kyle Girardi, the perfect wife. Just look up the perfect wife. And if that doesn't persuade you to give him his your, your kidney, I don't know what will. So uh, anyway, Patrick Stewart. You kind of look like Patrick Stewart with your head. What's uh, the, I'm just <laughs> with my head. <laughs> Hold on. I'm, I forgot about Brian Pepper's Apert, Apert syndrome. Is that... 
unusually short because he was wheelchair bound. So pitch me your Brian Pepper story. Is there anything right, more okay. other than he looks like him? <laughs> There's uh all right, we're gonna get Edward Furlong, okay? Yeah, and we're gonna pay him probably three hundred dollars cold hard cash under the table. We'll put him in a wheelchair and dress him up in a suit. And then um, we'll film him and make make sense of it in the edit. Okay, so he doesn't have to do much; just sit there. We'll just like that. film him when he's not paying attention. He doesn't think he's on. That'll really make it. That'll sell it. Um, okay, my number ten through number six selections here: uh, the remake of Straw Dogs, which I thought was going to be horrendous, uh, and actually turned out to be quite a good movie. I was dodging that film for the longest time. And I kind of just checked it out on a whim because it had James Woods in it. And I enjoyed James Woods. And I think it was right after I watched The Northman. So I wasn't soured to Alexander Skarsgård because he typically pops up in like a very dumb, dumb movies and dumb TV shows. And I don't know. Uh, he's just not my cup of tea for the most part. Although he was fun in Kingdom Exodus, Exodus, excuse me, um, as the attorney. It's the Me Too attorney. Is that the one with James Martinson, that remake? Uh -huh. Your favorite uh -huh. your favorite actor, James Martinson? The most boring leading actor in Hollywood, yeah. <laughs> he plays the Dustin Hoffman role, but he does a pretty good job. Mm. Uh, number nine is The Little Girl Who Lives Down the Lane, which is a movie we covered on this show. Jodie Foster, Martin Sheen. And uh, that was a nice surprise, that movie. A little yeah, uh, forgotten 70s film. You checked I it saw, out, Mario? I saw that this year, too, and uh, I really liked it. It's uh, it's a cozy movie, I would say. It's very uh, very cozy. Uh, number eight is uh, a John Cassavetes film. I only got around to watching this year. It's Gloria, with Jenna Rollins, um, and I also watched the remake this year. And the remake is really bad. Even George C. Scott is terrible. I mean, no, he's not. He's not terrible. He gives a good performance, but his dialogue is so on the nose. It doesn't do him any favors. Number seven is Last Tango in Paris, the uh, controversial Marlon Brando film where he, he loves to talk about uh, fucking pigs. She, yeah, he he, spits, he, yeah, he, he does. spits on his hand, right? That's yeah, he does. He, he lubes up his own asshole. Yeah. Number six is House of Gucci, which is just a remarkable piece of filmmaking from Ridley Scott. I enjoyed House of Gucci a lot. It was in my top five, and then I thought better of it. So you know what? Why don't we kick off our top five list? Um, do either of you have a preference in which order we go? Because I'm, I'm inclined to say you start, Mario, since uh, Hans and I have been talking nonstop for the past, like, ten minutes. I'm good it, with that. All right. Um, I, guess, I guess I'll kick it off with, I think I got five here that I really liked. Um, probably the movie that I was most uh I guess made me like I don't know think about like think about the next day the most which is usually when I decide that I really like something like if the next day I'm thinking about it mm -hmm. I'll go with uh like I usually really liked it and that was this movie Ordinary People yes I watched this as well this year uh that's and, a great uh, pick and it was just really fucking good. I mean, it had like the little, the little Oscar on the VHS. I guess it won Best Picture that year. And uh, it just fucking kind of blew me away. It was almost like, it was almost like if, it was like if Fer if Ferris Bueller was uh, if like Cameron was the main character or something. Mm. You know, like if you took away the, uh, the like popularity and everything, and it was kind of about the more unstable uh not so cool friend and it was like focused on him and uh, i thought it just did a really good job at like showing a kid that uh is going through like a really rough time like uh mentally with uh you know with all the stuff like uh anxiety and traumas or all the stuff that he goes through in that movie and um it's set right around where I, where I live. And, uh, I thought they just did a really, really good job of, uh, it just felt, it felt like a real kid and, uh, a real weird family 
with uh, the whole dynamic of losing a uh, losing a sibling and seeing parents like not really able to figure out how to bounce back and that just being the case like they don't really it doesn't really get resolved and you just kind of see this uh you, you just see this family have to deal with it and uh, yeah i just thought that movie ruled so uh, for those who haven't seen ordinary people i believe it was directed by robert redford yeah um and it's about a boy and his brother who get into i think it's I, if i'm remembering correctly it's like a boating accident or something yeah and they wind up lost at sea for a period of time in the middle of a storm or something and the brother gets washed away and timothy hutton who's only i think a teenager he's probably like 18 or 19 when he's shooting this film uh is the brother who's kind of coping with that happening and blaming himself for not going after the even though he would have drowned as well. Mm -hmm. And you have uh, Donald Sutherland and Mary Tyler Moore. And Mary Tyler Moore is playing a dramatic role. And she's kind of like this bitchy, cold, very shut off mom. Not like typically, I think if a film was made today, it would be reversed where the Donald Sutherland would be like, yeah, you you know, I, I, I don't even acknowledge you as my son, but he's yeah. really like the sappy, like trying to, fix the situation put things back to normal guy he's so good at playing just a dope playing like a soft dope he, he plays one in uh day of the locust as well he plays a character named homer simpson who's just like a legitimate cuckold and he's in love with this this woman who flirts with all these other men he just takes care of her and he, she doesn't even sleep with him she disrespects him and uh, he just snaps one day and he stomps to death on a child jackie earl haley as a boy future rorschach and uh he's great in that movie he's great in ordinary people as well uh, i also thought it was interesting that judd hirsch got nominated for best supporting actor he might have won i don't know if that he won but i know he got nominated for best supporting actor for this movie because his role is pretty limited and mm -hmm. it's kind of like a, a shaved down version of robin williams character in goodwill hunting yeah so um yeah ordinary people is a terrific pick uh and also i i didn't know anything about the movie going into it when i watched it so i was surprised at like how low stakes it was because i feel like the trailer maybe hyped it up to be something more elaborate or or, or what have you and it was going to be like an ironic title but no it's just it's a really good family drama that um i if if i remember correct is that based on true events or? i think it might have been it's it really is just like a kid trying to get back to the normal life of being a high school kid with a shitty ass mom like he mm -hmm. has a super shitty mom and like you said we don't really see that done as often but i enjoy seeing that because there's plenty of them yeah um i will go next and uh, my number five for the years a korean film from 2008 called crush and blush which i discovered through uh, kimchi DVD, I think, uh, or Plain Archive. Kimchi DVD is just a, a distributor in Korea. And it's uh, written and produced by Park Chan Wook, but it is directed by um, some director he collaborates with every so often, Lee Kyung Mi. And it's just some woman. I don't know. But I thought this movie, I don't really have a whole lot to say about this movie. Uh, I think it's about a. Um, you know, this this like 20 something awkward teacher who's in love with a guy who's married and she's trying to like force this relationship to happen. And she's awkward and clumsy. And uh, it's very 2008, very like aughts in terms of like, oh, she's instant messaging him from somebody else's account and trying to figure out secrets and do this. But it's a funny movie. It's very funny. Um, yeah. All right. We'll move on. Hans. Uh, my five, my fifth, blah, 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 my fifth movie. Uh, it's uh, Thunder Road, which I've only seen this year. I think we the Jim Cummings to, film. Yeah, I think we were supposed to cover it before, but we just never did. Uh, that with I think I think we we're gonna do like a retrospective or, yeah. or something because we you were mentioning him a lot, and I had not seen it until this year, and I just thought that uh, he did a really good job at making a cop, which is usually not the most likable character, into a very I, I, I don't want to say likable because I don't like the, that type usually, but um, it's like like one of those very uncomfortable movies that they become funny because it's not supposed to be funny, but it's played in such a straight way that it it becomes funny somehow. 
uh, and it's about a cop that's dealing with his wife, uh, his wife or ex-wife dying, and then just him trying to be like Robo Ultra Super Cop, but not being very good at being a cop. And there's a lot of vulnerability and a lot of really funny moments in the movie. Uh, I don't think I've seen any of of his other movies, but I I really thought that was a a fun watch and. Uh, it it really shows his uh, range as an actor, I think, and, and talent as a director. At least in this movie, I haven't seen the other ones. I don't think you were a big fan of Beta Test, right? Or was it the Snow Hollow one? Uh, it was it was the Wolf of Snow Hollow. I wasn't a fan of uh, Beta Test. I thought was fine, but it wasn't. I mean, I, it was in my like top ten for last year, maybe or top fifteen. But we we're still coming out of uh, COVID movie period where yeah. everything was horrible. Uh, are are you familiar with Jim Cummings at all, uh, Mario? No, I'm not. But I saw a COVID movie yesterday that I did did not really enjoy oh, that much. Was, was that, that? Uh, that Netflix trending Noah Baumbach oh, movie? Mm, oh, I watched that too. I watched that yesterday too, and I hated it. Is yeah, that I just, five? I dude, I don't like when like actors talk to each other like the fucking Gilmore Girls, like at like <laughs> 95 miles an hour. Mm-hmm. I don't like, like. I have a rough time with that. But you know, yeah, people dude, have been saying I that movie's know. you know an Oscar contender, and I put it on thinking that, and I watched it. And I was like, this is a horrible movie. Um, yeah, it, the the sort of everybody's always trying to ape that Robert Altman style of characters talking over each other, and uh -huh. it becomes super grating, especially when they're doing quirky like Wes Andersony characters it reminded me of I, I wrote this on letterbox in a quick review of it but it reminded me of late career jim jarmusch like the dead don't die style yeah. and that's not my cup of tea at all i think that's no. pretty rough going so what yeah white noise was horrible and it, it it working as like a covid metaphor give me a break is that what he's known for i i I've, i think i've only seen marriage story which i i didn't care for at all because of that exact thing that Murray just said where it's I think this like, is the only movie I've ever seen that he made Francis Ha never saw Francis Ha is pretty good no I never Squid in it. the Well Squid in the Whale's all right yeah not not familiar is that what he's known for though that quippy like dial unrealistic dialogue where everyone's just sounds the same no I mean his earlier films from the aughts are a little bit of that, but it's mostly just like affluent New Yorkers who who are cold and socially inept. Does he like to uh, like cuck his main characters super hard, like in every movie? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was uh, so upset by that. I was like, oh, oh god. I I don't it's know where life. people are coming from with that movie, and then also uh, Babylon, which we're going to talk about more in depth. We have a show lined up on that once a screener drops that Hans can watch because he's in SAG now from uh, screaming the N word in, <laughs> in the latest short. Yeah. Um, all right. We'll uh, we'll move on to our number four picks then, unless you have Wait, something is, else to say about that, Jim Cummings. Is that the three and a half hour movie that you said? The, uh, from the director that had a lot of promise with uh, Whiplash and then did a bunch of shit. <laughs> I mean, I, I thought La La Land was good, and First Man was just boring. I don't think First Man's like a bad movie. It's just a boring movie. That's like, what's his name, uh, Chazelle. Damien Chazelle. Chazelle. He also yeah, not... wrote Ten Cloverfield Lane, and uh, what was the piano movie with John Cusack and Elijah Wood? It was a horror movie. The, oh, uh, oh, that was really bad. Uh, I'm just thinking of yeah, movies that I really one. didn't. I'm just thinking of all the movies I didn't like this year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right we can move on all right we'll move on then yeah. uh hans why don't you give your number four we'll go in reverse order all right uh lords of chaos is my number four uh that's another that i've never seen before and i thought it was really funny i love the i don't, I don't know how close to the real story of emperor emperor right no what's the, no, the mayhem. yeah em mayhem right emperor is what i think it becomes later or something uh, I I love the um, how because I grew up with a bunch of metal kids that were kind of like that, uh, and to me it was always kind of embarrassing because uh, you know them and you know that they're not that hard, but they pretend to be hard because they have to be metal. And this movie's it's pretty much making fun of that. Uh, 
again, I don't know how close it is to the to the actual story of that band, but I left a lot more than I thought I would uh, f- for that same reason. And I, I really like the way it was shot. And I think the, the performances were really good, especially um, the Culkin kid. What's his name? Culkin kid uh, is like 40 Culkin. now. Yeah, he's really good in it. Uh, and uh, it, yeah, that, that's that's my fourth one. I don't know if you've ever seen it, Mario. No, I got to give it a chance. I, my One of my good friends has been telling me to uh, watch it for like years now. Are you uh, well versed at all on on Norwegian black metal? Not really. I mean, I remember watching uh, that "Until the Light Takes Us" documentary mm-hmm. uh, when I was younger. I think probably like in high school. I had like a brief fascination with it, but uh, not. I don't know a whole lot about it. I think the characters are more interesting in those scenes than the music maybe is. They might mm-hmm. they might even overshadow their own art. Uh, with the you know and ironically i think the most talented person to come out of that whole scene that i'm aware of is probably varg and he's also the one who overshadows his his own work the most because he's a murderer <laughs> killing <laughs> kill the guy so and, uh, among... and they did him dirty too in this movie right because they they cast the guy that looks nothing like him he's yes. kind of chubby and, mm-hmm. and kind of i don't want to say jewish looking but he is <laughs> You know, which is the complete opposite of of what he looks like and what what he doesn't like. Uh, he, I think he, uh, if I'm not mistaken, he talked negatively about the movie. I, I don't know if that's the reason why, but uh, the the way he's portrayed in it, it's it's very foolish, very very much like a like a insecure uh, kid that you know he doesn't get the recognition that he wants, so he ends up, you know, killing the other guy but uh yeah it's it's uh it's an enjoyable i think it's like two hours but it, it goes by really quickly and again like i'm i'm very i'm not very familiar with the story of that uh, norwegian uh black metal i started reading into it after watching this uh just because of how ridiculous everything is and how you know the whole uh we have to find a basement that looks like a dungeon because we're metal and we're going to be in these uncomfortable chairs because metal and and we're going to wear leather during the summer because metal like all that shit is ridiculous and hilarious to me so i the way that it's portrayed here just in a, in a very not very serious way ma- makes it very enjoyable i think mm-hmm. yeah i think it works best as uh satire and just looking at it as a comedy because if you take it as like a direct translation of the events that happened it's probably not super close but then again like people always gripe about the book lords of chaos that came out which uh paints people to be i guess inaccurate to them their actual selves or like varg is portrayed as a ufo nut or something in in the book i listened to it a while back years ago um and then also the documentary that mario cited uh i guess has some some issues with it as well, but I don't know. My number four is uh, The Working Class Goes to Heaven, which is an Italian film uh, that is from the same director of uh, uh, Investigation of a Citizen Beyond Suspicion. And it's about a guy who works in a factory and he's very unhappy. He's unhappy with his ex-wife. He's unhappy with his girlfriend and his kid. And he cuts his finger one day and becomes like a, a political figure for the unions that are protesting outside uh and and sort of like this martyr of some kind um even though he's just you know what it reminds me of it's it's a lot like joker it's quite a lot like joker except it doesn't end with uh robert de niro's eye being blown out of his head and um you know they just kind of use him he's a useful idiot to this movement to um you know have the the wages improved and conditions improved but he doesn't really care. He's just kind of mentally checked out of everything because he's got all these stressful things in his life. And it's just a, it's a, another funny movie, another funny foreign film that I don't have a whole lot to say about. It's just good. Okay. So, all right, Mario, you're number four. All right. I watched a uh, ton of uh, spooky stuff in October and I came across this, uh, this Japanese horror film called The Evil Dead Trap. Hmm. Do you know about this? I've heard of it because of the title, obviously, being Evil Dead Trap. Right. Uh, I but I haven't watched watch it. Be- yeah, I almost didn't watch it because I was like, what the fuck is this? Some sort of 
Japanese spoof of uh, the Evil Dead or something, mm. but no, it's nothing like that. It's uh, it was it blew me away just knowing nothing about it, and um, I don't know if this is like I was like, is this like a legendary film in Japan? Because like I, I don't know, I I couldn't like think of anything as crazy or like visually like striking and stylized as as this movie like from japan as far as like horror horror movies go and uh it just has like a little bit of everything like it's like the violence is like really really well done um it's really straightforward as far as like you know people going to a location and then bad things happening to them but um and then at the end it like takes a really weird a really strange uh turn that uh you don't really see coming almost like almost reminded me of like tetsuo or something mm -hmm. just it reminded me a lot like that and it kind of it kind of comes out of nowhere because other than that it's it's almost like a japanese giallo movie until the last 20 minutes or a half hour it gets really fucking weird but um it was just a blast i was like holy shit this is uh it became like my, I guess, my favorite Japanese horror film. Wait, I, I have to get better, ver you know, for, for as much uh, poking of uh, some of my weaviness that has occurred over the years. I'm not that well versed on Japanese cinema. I, I'm very well versed on a couple of Japanese directors. So I have to check out more of that. I did the Agitator podcast kind of recently where they just strictly talk about Japanese films on that show. It's a very good show uh, for anyone wanting to give that a listen and they they put me on for this movie called meatball machine and it was like a power rangers bad guy movie and i was like what the fuck am i gonna have to say about this uh it, it was crazy and out of control and, and the director of the movie followed me on instagram shortly after that episode dropped so that was kind of cool and i learned he was a producer on shin godzilla and some some movies i was familiar with he's like a visual effects guy mainly cool yeah um, I, don't go, I don't go that deep either so I that I, I will have to check out Evil Dead Trap. Um if 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 you like it, then I think that's pretty much as good of a cosign as as you can get for it's fun. That kind it's of fun. Um okay. It, it, it's over to you again, Hans. How how are we looking for number three? Uh I have uh Men Behind the Sun. Uh it's a Japanese movie. I think it's Japanese. <laughs> it's uh the, the war between Jap Japan and China. Uh, so a bunch of Chinese people are being uh, kept uh, as prisoners of the uh, Japanese army. And uh, there's a lot of very gory scenes about how they were being tortured and experimented with. Uh, the plot is not very complicated or very complex. It's pretty much, um, you know, the war is happening. So now we're just going to torture these people because they're below us. Uh, and then the war ends, and it's like, oh, what are we going to do with them? I guess we'll kill them all. Uh, but Hold then... on. I just looked this up, and I would really appreciate it if you posted this to um, the – or not posted, but decided to stream this onto uh, our broadcast here is this poster for the movie you're talking about, The Men Behind the Sun. This is a very curious poster for this movie, Hans. I, I, I'm surprised okay. you – saw this and said i gotta see this movie let me just take yeah. a look at that hold on yep it's uh it looks like quite the film so this is <laughs> men behind the sun yeah <laughs> and this is a, a war epic you're, you're telling yeah. me this is a historical film like saving yeah, private the, ryan for China. this this looks like that uh, those uh ganyan ganyan how do you say that people from ghana Ghanian. uh those those posters where yeah. the, every, every, all of this happens in it uh, i don't remember that there's gorilla, a gorilla in a cube I, I don't remember the gorilla but i remember that <laughs> this girl she, she's getting her hands frozen and then broken as they're frozen uh and then see it's like this so that does happen so it's very graphic and very visually shocking uh and uh all of the scientists are real pieces of shit uh so uh i don't know about the baby let's see a gorilla you have no recollection of a gorilla wow. well there you go he's a phoenix suns yeah. fan phoenix <laughs> see yeah he became the mascot and now dunks in the halftime 
uh but uh yeah i i remember i remember enjoying this again my this list is from movies that we've seen throughout the year right so with the memory that i have i remember very very few things about it i just remember enjoying how graphic it was and how fucked up it's pretty messed up if this actually happened i didn't really look into the historical background on it uh but it has a lot of very shocking scenes that that i thought were were interesting so that would that's why i would make my my top five i guess uh mario why don't you take it with number three all right let's go with marathon man the um the uh, dustin hoffman movie that is a terrific fic marathon man i just watched that for the first time in 2021 i want to say yeah i mean that movie is just a fucking blast like I don't, I don't have like much to say about it but i know that i felt like it was definitely one of the best movies like this right after i finished it i was like yeah that was that was fucking amazing so what's the story is it about a man that runs you know, I used to get the movie Marathon Man confused with uh, The Dentist, the horror movie with C Corbin Burnson from the 90s <laughs> when I was a kid because there's a scene in Marathon Man where he's, like, yanking his teeth out, right? He's going to yeah, torture him. Dude, intense, way. intense scene. He's getting his fucking teeth yanked out. But, yeah, so, he likes to run. He, he runs every day. He tries mm -hmm. to beat his time in New York, very New York film. And... Uh, and then he meets the wrong chick. He meets a chick that uh, is up to no good. And he's, he's banging her, banging her for a while, gets nice and comfortable, and then finds out that she is uh, not who she said she was. Yeah, and, she's uh, a, a double agent there. And is, yeah. Roy Scheider is in the movie as well and plays his brother, yeah. if I remember correctly. And he's kind of a piece of shit. Right. Um, so, yeah, Marathon Man's a, a great movie. Hans, you should definitely check that out. Uh, considering you have not, apparently. yeah, I haven't. I do uh, like no, those dirty New York '70s movies too. So, I wouldn't even say it's like an exceptionally dirty New York film. No, it makes New York look like a very fun place to run. <laughs> it does. <laughs> it's one of the honestly, it's like one of the uh, better examples of New York, or more uh, more flattering examples of New York in the '70s. What would happen if you go running in New York now? Nothing. I mean, what what part of New York? You want to go run, run in Bronx. the Bronx? Go running, in the, go jogging in the Bronx? That could be good exercise. I don't know. <laughs> Heart health yeah. would improve. That's what would happen do, if you were running in New York. Do one of those hood pranks. Remember those hood YouTube? pranks? Yeah, pranks in the hood. You just go and like step on someone's shoes or something and hope you don't get shot. I mean, I've been watching a lot of videos on YouTube lately of like uh, this this very corny looking white guy who will just go into massive project buildings like 60 floor project buildings out in brooklyn in the worst parts of brooklyn and try and like get to know the locals and i'll wear like a fitted hat and a black t-shirt and he it's very embarrassing stuff but it's uh also kind of interesting to check out oh this is what this project building is like um anyway my number three is blue collar the paul schrader movie paul, paul schrader's first movie first directed effort starring Harvey Keitel and Richard Pryor. I was waiting to uh, watch this film. I was really like putting it off. I was stalling because I I don't know. The, the Whenever you check out a director's first movie, usually sucks. Usually not that good. Even Stanley Kubrick, his first movie, Fear and Desire, uh, kind of blows. You know, you can see touches of his style that would... Um, you know, envelop his career later on. But for the most part, it's not great. It's an hour long, you know. Uh, but Blue Collar, I thought, boasted a terrific performance from Richard Pryor, which I did not expect. Yeah. And Harvey Keitel is very good in it. You buy the sort of uh, work relationship that these guys have. And uh, also Yafit Koto, I think, is the third guy in the mix in that. Yeah, Yafit Koto. Ed Begley Jr. as well. Uh, there's... Famously, a story about how on the first day or the first week of shooting on this movie, Harvey Keitel just got on a plane during the filming and left and didn't tell anyone where he was going or when he would be back. And Paul Schrader had a mental breakdown because he didn't know what to do because he was only a screenwriter. Scorsese was helming all of his scripts and 
he didn't uh, know how to navigate that situation, which the answer is obvious. You just shoot everything else without Harvey Keitel in it, but he didn't realize that. So he embarrassed himself on the set, and uh, Richard Pryor said something to the effect of, uh, are you going to be a pussy or are you going to be a director? <laughs> and he straightened up from that. And uh, I, I think for like a first, first film, uh, Blue Collar is pretty solid. Maybe it runs a little too long and it gets into – uh, territory, you know, you probably could have ended it half hour sooner than where mm -hmm. it winds up going. But I think he's trying to like make a point of, well, this is how, you know, they divide people. This is how they pit people against each other. And I think there's like a final line of the movie that's spoken in voiceover, which you really, really don't need and kind of kills it a little bit, you know, but f for the most part, Blue Collar is a terrific, enjoyable film. And I certainly recommend it to anyone who's a fan of Paul Schrader. So that's my number three for the year. Uh, Hans, how about back to you? Uh, my number two of the year is uh, Christmas Story. thought the movie was great. Very enjoyable. T took me back to the 1940s yep. when I was a little child. Uh <laughs> well, most people watched the Christmas Story for the first time when they were like four years old, yeah. five years old. Uh, that, was, that was a new one for me. Uh, I finally get the whole. I love your niche thing. obscure pick of a Christmas <laughs> story for number two. Movie that everyone but me has seen. Uh, I remember that. Uh, was it a special edition or something where they, they put out? I think it was like a DVD case in the shape of the leg lamp or like a leg lamp thing yeah. that came with it. Uh, that was the only memory that I had about that. Just seeing it at a Blockbuster or like one of those stores, uh, HM. Uh, but I think it's a it's a the case was shaped like the leg. I don't remember if it was the case or or if it was the me. That would be first, such a yeah. pain in the ass to put on your shelf with all your other movies. I would hate that. Well, I hated that when they did that with that Simpsons Homer head. When they did four or five boxes that were normal and then the fucking plastic Homer head for for the set. So annoying. Oh, I, you did guys. I dream? Uh... Did you dream? <laughs> You Sorry, guys talk, you guys brought up that one movie. You know when you see a movie when you're like a kid and you're like, fuck, I'll never remember what the fuck that movie was, but I like really liked it. And you guys brought it up. It was that movie, uh, A Summer Story or whatever. My or Summer like, Story. Yeah, yeah, that movie. Dude, I've been trying to figure out what the fuck that movie was called for like my whole life. It has two titles. It has My Summer Story and it runs in the fan. They released it as one movie. And then when it came out on video, they gave it a different title. It was a very uh, live, die, repeat, edge of tomorrow situation. Well, when I was a kid, I really, really liked that fucking movie. So thank you for uh, solving that, <laughs> solving that puzzle for me. What is it? A summer story? My summer story. Nice. Uh, my camera, my special camera here has shit the bed for some reason. So we're going back to the old days of oh, webcam. Man. For those of us, uh, for those of you watching on patreon.com slash lowres in the $5 tier, for those of you who are simply listening, which is the majority of the audience, uh, just ignore this part. So uh, your, your number two is A Christmas Story. You really enjoyed that film. Is it because of the, the blatant racism of the Chinese singing <laughs> I mean, at the end? I mean, that was definitely a laugh out loud moment that I was not expecting. <laughs> at all because the whole movie is so nice and wholesome and, and even even the way they uh they handle bullies i think it wasn't you know it wasn't that bad and then you get to you know what what can we eat since the dogs ate our turkey so let's go to a chinese restaurant where everyone's just going to be singing with a stereotypical south park like chinese voice uh and that yeah caught me off guard and i i laughed pretty hard at that so uh it's definitely one of the highlights of the movie for me, but I, I just feel like uh, you don't really make movies with with that amount of heart anymore. Even Christmas movies, like we went through uh, the episode, like everything that's Christmassy now, it just seems like an awkward romantic comedy or like an awkward. This is a guy that is very busy, and this woman is also busy, but they get together because they're Christmas. Well, as we saw, yeah. it's a white nerd dating an Asian woman in Hollywood. Right. That's the movie. Yeah. That's your Christmas. And, and this movie just has a lot of elements that uh, after watching, you know, other movies that I'm sure ripped off uh, elements from it, seeing the original one uh, or where it all started, I guess, uh, was uh, really cool. So I that would be my my number two. Wonderful. Uh, Mario, would you like to 
announce your number two pick that you watched in 2022. Yes, I uh, really enjoyed this movie called Habit from 1995. Ooh, Larry Fassenden? Yes, the man missing a tooth with the large forehead from every horror movie. Truly like the the least appealing looking uh, lead protagonist you could put in a film, probably. Yeah. This guy fucking works a lot. Like as far as like horror movies in the last fucking 20 years, like you always see this guy mm -hmm. and shit, but I've never seen him uh, as the lead. And I just What's thought it called? This Habit, 1995. Oh, okay. That's another New uh, York movie. Yeah, I th I mean, I've been in New York a handful of times, but it definitely felt, uh, well, I haven't been in New York in the 90s, but it felt uh, <laughs> fucking, Jesus, it felt pretty, forehead. pretty, yeah, it's massive. But uh, I just really enjoyed this movie. It felt... <laughs> <laughs> Damn, he looks like he's got progeria there. That's rough. <laughs> yeah, um, it was, uh, it was really enjoyable though. Like it's like it 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 kinda you know, it's like a fucking vampire art movie that like doesn't go too far into you know, it's not too up its own ass. It's uh it's uh grounded and just really enjoyable. Yeah, I checked that out as well for the first time uh this year. And I had seen him cameo in a bunch of movies before and I didn't realize they were cameos. I didn't know it was like all based on the goodwill of doing this movie in the 90s that people were like, hey, I'll reach out to him and see if he'll show up for a day. And he does that a lot, like you said. Yeah. Um, that's a that's a fun pick. And uh, honestly, the better habit film between this and um, The Addiction, Abel Ferrara's movie released around the same time that yeah. was done in black and white. I, was, yeah, I, didn't, I didn't really care for that movie too much. Me either, yeah. Um, my number two for the year uh, is a very wholesome family film that takes place during the Great Depression. It is Peter Bogdanovich's Paper Moon from 1973 uh, with Ryan O'Neill and Tatum O'Neill, which I guess there's like a story behind the scenes because they were both nominated for Oscars. She's the youngest Oscar winner ever for this movie. And I guess after she won and the ceremony ended, he was so jealous of his own daughter that he like belted her in the face or something. <laughs> It was not very nice, not very fatherly, Ryan O'Neill. But um, that's something that happened. And it's like he's he's like a con artist and he finds out that the, I believe the mother died and he's got to go deliver this girl to her aunt. And he's denying that he's the father. And you know, it's a whole thing. It's a bit planes, trains and automobiles. Uh, it is a classic film. It's probably Peter Bogdanovich's best movie. A lot of people will say The Last Picture Show. It's not. It's Paper Moon. And uh, I just really thoroughly enjoyed this movie. I mean, it's a big classic film that I waited far too long to watch. And the dynamic between Ryan O'Neill and Tatum O'Neill, and also Madeline Kahn is in the movie. Madeline Kahn was a very funny actress. Uh, she was in Young Frankenstein. She was in Cosby. The no <laughs> 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 He's dead, Hans. What, what is the point oh, is of proving here? He died this year, I think. He was in Talking Sopranos. This is Krinkov from your favorite podcast, Talking oh, Sopranos. Talking, that's right. Best guest, ta Talking Sopranos. I think he won that award uh, <laughs> this year. Anyway, Peter Bogdanovich, he played the therapist on The Sopranos. He's also in It Chapter 2 as a director. So how about that? So, yeah, my number two for the year is Paper Moon. It was almost number one. Almost number one. I had to think about it. But last year, we went wholesome over Looking for Mr. Goodbar. Uh, this year, not the case. Okay, so that's all of our number twos. This is number one, best film watched in 2022, not from 2022. Mario, why don't you start us off? All right, I basically did mine in uh, reverse order. So oh, so you already two. sent your number one. <laughs> yeah, I started out with my number one. <laughs> all right, <laughs> your least favorite then of the five for 2022. Yeah, um, I'll probably give it to the Hitcher. Ooh, the uh, the, the original Hitcher. I see. Yes, the original the original Hitcher uh, is was just a blast, and I didn't know anything about it, and it was just one of those. Like I don't know if it's when you there's like something when you just pick up something based off of like a a cool looking like I think I just got the VHS, mm. and I didn't know anything about it, 
you know, got it for a, got it for like a dollar and then just put it in and was just like, really, uh, it, it really kept my attention. And, uh, it's just a ton of fun. And that dude from Blade Runner is just fucking unbelievable. And right. It's really, yeah. yeah. It's like the fucking just most fucking badass villain that just won't fucking stop. And it's just really fun. It's just a really fun fucking sweaty kind of desert road trip feeling movie and um it's just it's just a blast to see like a fucking showdown with the cops like that and shit gets so fucking chaotic and uh you're just like feeling so bad for the main character who's just i think he was just trying to deliver a car to california and uh just ends up in the biggest shit storm ever and uh it's a fucking great great thriller but yeah, it was just one of those things I knew nothing about and popped it in. And I was like, oh, fuck, this is like really, really good. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. You should check out The Hitcher 2 starring Jake Busey. That's what <laughs> I would recommend. They made it like 25 years later as direct-to-video. Yeah. I think they yeah. got C. Thomas Howell back for that one. So yeah. All right. we take a look at the cover art for that real quick, sure. the DVD cover art. They also did a remake with Sean Bean as yeah. the... Rutger Hauer character. I can't imagine that's any good. And I think they did it. So the Hitcher famously is like a gay allegory, right? Because he's with a girl or something, but he's kind of into the Hitcher and then he lets the Hitcher kill his girlfriend or something. Oh, I don't know. yeah, been... she gets it. But she gets it bad. So that's that's like the metaphor for, oh, now he's he's accepted. He's into guys. Um, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm sure that doesn't carry on in the Hitcher 2 but the thing in the Hitcher remake was Sean Bean's connection is with the girl, not the guy, because they started to make that transition over. Right. We're going to start gender swapping everything. I mean, if you pick up a guy on the road, yeah, I'm never, I'm, I just started driving. I'm never going to pick up a yeah. guy. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. Point. I'm never fucking doing that. Yeah. yeah. That's a Michael Bay produced remake. Oh, so it's part of the Michael Bay Platinum Dunes series of horror remakes. Wow, I did not know that. We missed that. We should do. We should do a retrospective on all of those movies at some point. Should we? No. Um, no. <laughs> what's, what's your what's, what's your number two of the year, Hans? Uh, my one. That's number one. Movie. Excuse me. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. My my number one is Heat. Uh, the Michael. We talked Man about film. it. At, yeah, yeah. We talked about it at length in that episode, I think. But uh, it's the I think the best Michael Mann movie still. Um, I think his style uh, shines in this movie more than any other. And uh, the performances are all good across the board. Hank Azaria has a really funny, cucky performance in it. Uh, and uh, I just like the, you know, De Niro wearing a goatee, being a, you know, a, a cool guy, being a, like a slick and then he's just in love with Al Pacino at the end. So he throws everything away so that he can go back and, and hug him for a last time. It was very good. Really enjoyed it. And I think it, it, I might have seen parts of it before on TV just when I was a kid. But for the, the whole thing, like watching it from, from beginning to end, I'd never done it until this year. And uh, it was great. So uh, have, you, have you guys seen that movie where like they got Pacino and De Niro like back uh, with like 50 Cent? Righteous kill. Righteous kill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my dude, my dad, my fucking dad made me watch that movie one night. And I was like, dude, this is a piece. Of <laughs> <laughs> uh, I haven't seen that movie in it. You know how I watched that movie is I watched not even like a DVD, but a CD bootleg burned copy of Righteous Kill around the time it came out in theaters. And I think it was broken up onto two CDs. Yeah. Yeah. It was pretty funny. You know, the marketing for this movie was a total lie because they were like, for the first time ever, De Niro, like they just erased heat from happening for the first time ever, Pacino <laughs> and De Niro on screen together. That's hilarious. They look exhausted. Yeah, that they knew what they were signing up for. So uh, heat is, is a great pick, Hans. Um, nice my one. number one for the year, 2022, watched in 2022 is a movie we covered on this program it's 1983's angst by uh gerald cargyle the german film about a killer who is released early so he can go look for work 
and instead uh, accidentally kills a family in their home and adopts a cute, adorable dog. Uh, angst is a, a rip roaring good time. I think Gene Siskel said that. A rip roaring good time. Gene Shallot said that as well. Uh, and it's uh, accidental because he sucks at it. Yes, he's not. He tries to kill them, and then he's like, maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I should just restrain her. Oops, I accidentally killed her while restraining her. Uh, and the victims are horrible looking, and uh, they, you know you don't feel bad for them when they die because the girl's like kind of into it. She's like, ah, oh, yeah, maybe I want to fuck. And then the old woman's like, ah, and she's just spooky and scary and you kind of want her to die because uh, she's very clown-esque with the lipstick and the old lady makeup caked on. And who else? Oh, the retarded son who says paw, paw, classic line. Uh, yeah, I'm glad he died. I'm kind of glad they all died. But I'm glad the, uh, the wiener dog lived because I was like, I'm preparing myself because I know that dog's getting stomped out in the worst way imaginable. He doesn't. <laughs> they yeah, subverted yeah. it at the time. You know, I got some flack earlier this year for saying that dog should have died in Prey. Which, Mario, I know you said you didn't see Prey, right? No. You, you probably won't watch Prey. But no. the, the, dog in Prey? the Native American girl has a dog. And they let the dog live. And the dog is like a hero at the end, stops the predator. And he jumps in the way and bites the predator's mask off or something. Oh, yeah, the no. predator would have fucking just went zap. Yeah. I hate it's this like trend. Bud. Yes, it's unearned. It's unearned. And they don't want to upset the viewer by killing the animal. And look, I was, I've, I perhaps am a vegetarian. I don't know. I had chicken for dinner tonight. But I've been, <laughs> I've been on a slippery slope here to take in more protein and uh like i love animals but listen we got to kill more animals in these films uh i think they got to do the air bud reboot where air bud is uh run over by a car after he wins the big game i think that's the way to do it <laughs> he's carrying this mvp yes. trophy and he just got run over right so if you're in 1983 you're sitting down for a german movie mm -hmm. angst a german killer movie unrated you're like, that That dog's going, and he's yeah. going in the worst way imaginable. And for the dog to make it, wonderful ending. Such a happy it, ending. It is also the least threatening type of dog, too. Just like a little wiener dog with tiny just legs. pathetic, you know, stupid <laughs> dog. The dog's so cutthroat, too. Because as soon as the owners die, he's just like, I guess I'm going with you. You're my owner now. <laughs> you know, he hops in the passenger seat and just leaves with the dude who violently killed every member of the family. Um, yeah, wonderful film, angst, Christmas film, in yeah. my head anyway. So that's our that's our top top fifteen of the year, five five five. How about that? Uh, Ordinary people, number one from Mario. Heat, number one from Hans, and angst, number one from myself. Um, yeah. So twenty twenty three going forward, Mario. Are there any movies coming out this next year that you find yourself looking forward to? This next year, have I seen any some any trailers that have? Uh, fuck, there's got to be something that I'm looking forward to. You know, they play it very close to the the chest uh, these days, as far as the trailers go, because they don't. I don't even think they know when they want to drop their movies, because they're thinking, well, maybe, you know, are we going to do this direct to streaming, or are we going to do this a theatrical? Well, what if there's another pandemic? What if we do this? What if we do that? Like the uh, the Flash movie, I think it got nudged around yet again, but just like a week or something. Uh, yeah. That's the only movie that's supposed to come out this year, I think. It's going to freebie. Yeah, that, that's where it belongs <laughs> at this rate. Uh, uh, they started selling toys in stores of that Flash movie, so they really got to drop it soon. Yes, with a choke slamming woman action. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't it's, know. I mean, besides, like, I don't know, fucking Joker 2 or something. I don't really know what else is. Uh, I know. think that's next year. Oh, that's not even. I don't think so. I think they're filming it over the next couple of months and they're going to drop it maybe in early 2024. I'm looking at a list right now and uh, it's a lot oh, of no. just sequels. There's uh, Magic Mike 2 is coming out in February. Um, no, that's like Magic I... Mike 4. There's four Magic Mike movies? All right. Well, then no, another Magic Mike movie. <laughs> 2023 uh February. Oh, Michael. There's uh Ant-Man and the Wasp. There's uh Creed 3. Uh Scream 6. Shazam 2. John Wick 4. 
Dungeons and Dragons, Super Mario Brothers, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 3, uh, Fast and the Furious 10, Little Mermaid, uh, Transformers, Rise of the, of the Beasts, The Flash, Indiana Jones 7, or whatever, <laughs> uh, Mission Impossible 10, Oppenheimer, that one should be fine, right? That Christopher Nolan. Mm-hmm. You have uh, Marvel's a movie called Roosevelt by Scorsese. Starring Roosevelt by Scorsese. Yeah. Oh, it's where's this uh, Where's this Killer Moon Scorsese movie? Uh, Killers of the Flower um, Moon? That, Flower I thought that was Moon? supposed to come out like for Oscar season. I thought that was supposed to be out by now. They were going to put it on Apple, but that hasn't happened. I don't know. I guess it's... the only movie I'm going to see this year is Super Mario. <laughs> <laughs> there's Barbie. Uh, there's uh, The Nun 2, for some reason. Uh, the Exorcist, the David Gordon Green. Oh, uh, right. That could be is that this year? Mm-hmm. Uh, June 2, uh, Hunger Games reboot? I guess. Prequel, oh, what, sorry. Oh, what was he doing in that fucking... Uh, uh, bisexual cannibal movie that oh bones be. yeah david gordon green randomly shows up in bones and all yeah, what the hell Hans, did you see bones and all no i i tell you what i want my money back because i went <laughs> to the theater to see this movie and there was just nothing else playing and uh very long but you know what was wrong for my biggest gripe with this movie was that okay? First of all, like fucking Chamolet looks like he just walked out of fucking like Paxson in 2010. I know, yeah, yeah. It's not 80s at all. <laughs> no, not 80s at all. And like he's like this, uh, like Metro fucking whatever. He it doesn't look right. He's and he sh- he should have been like a trailer park hillbilly in like a Stone Cold Steve Austin shirt. That then I would have like I would have bought the movie if he was like a straight up ugly little little white trash kid i think that's that would have made a lot more sense with the whole movie and he was just uh probably just doing the director a solid like coming back to do this like you know fucking after his like you know big big stardom to do this kind of artsy fucking dark drama but um i think it was just all wrong with him as the lead and it should have been like an ugly little an an ugly teenage kid yeah, I completely agree with you. I mean, that movie, I, I didn't hate it. Uh, how do you feel about Luca Guadagnino? I don't know nothing about the like. He any, did um, anything else that this uh, is, is this the director that made this movie? Yeah, he did uh, the remake of Suspiria, and he also did Call Me by Your Name. Suspiria, I feel, was like an hour too long, and uh, I could have done without a lot of stuff in that movie. But um, I never saw. I never saw the Call Me By Your Name movie. I think this movie was a big step down for for him. Uh, and mm. the lead actress in this movie doesn't really hold her own uh, the same way as, as Timothy or Mark Rylance. Uh, she just seems kind of passable as an actress. Yeah. I, you know, I, I don't know. I, I thought it was a, a disappointment for me personally, considering a lot of people have gassed that film up as something special, something interesting. So, yeah. yeah. Um, hey, you know what I watched yesterday? Spice World. That's the oh, best yeah. movie of 2023 so far that I've I've tuned into is Spice World. What a the, cast in Spice World. The Spice Girls movie? That's right. Wait, 2023? That's you right. Said, that, yes, watched in 2023. I, yes, I'm sorry. Oh, new watch, list here. Oh. I'm going to give you the ranking of films I watched in 2023. Did you do a uh, double feature with uh, Josie and the Pussycats? Oh, that would have been a good pick, but no, I didn't. Isn't Carson Daly the biggest star in that movie? Probably. I don't know. I, I barely remember that movie. I was probably hammered when I watched it. <laughs> uh, for 2023 so far, I've watched White Noise, Spice World, T2 3D Terminator 2, the Universal Studios short. Someone <laughs> uploaded that to YouTube. Uh, Stay Tuned, which is a weird John Ritter uh, Jeffrey Jones movie that was for free on YouTube. I just had that playing on the TV while I was working. And uh, The Hobbit, the animated Hobbit. And that's maybe the best movie I've seen is The Hobbit. Right on. So there we go. All right. Um, uh, do you guys know there's a Willy Wonka 
reboot with, with, Timothée with Timothée Chalamet yeah. coming out soon. On the way? Too. Yeah. This year, right? 2023. Paul well, King is the director. Who's Paul King? Director of, oh, Paddington 2. I can't wait to see uh I can't wait to see Timothy jack off one of the Oompa Loompas <laughs> in, a, <laughs> in the factory <laughs> behind <laughs> behind the chocolate maker or whatever. <laughs> yeah, there's also um um uh just a lot of shit. Ferrari, Michael Mann. Oh, I'm stoked for Ferrari. I, I think that'll stoked. be that'll be great. Zack Snyder's Rebel Moon, is that this year? I think so. There's going to be two yeah. of those. I'm most two stoked for year. Ferrari then, by far. I'm just glad to have something new directed by Michael Mann to uh, to come out. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, Master Gardener, the new Paul Schrader film, which I've learned is about like a former Proud Boy, like the Gavin McInnes group. Oh. He, Joel, Joel Anderson plays a former Proud Boy, like... I don't, I Isn't he don't like know. 50? He's yeah. Like... I don't know. So that could be interesting. He has like a relationship with some uh, like 20 years younger biracial chick. Who's making this movie? Uh, Paul Schrader, who did uh, Blue Oh, what Collar the hell? And... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's okay? a Chicken Run, a chicken run uh -oh. sequel coming out too. Yeah, they okay. won't cast Mel Gibson in that though. Wait, so no Mel Gibson. Fuck it. So... Yeah. Fuck Chicken Run. Yeah, I don't know if Paul Schrader is okay. He seems to be dying every three months. Um, yeah, I I hope he can rebound and do like one more movie or something. Well, but... we always think he's dying, and then he comes back with like a horny Facebook post, and you're like, oh, he's, <laughs> he's okay. He's, That's what's he's still all right. <laughs> still yeah. horny. Uh, yeah, 2023 is probably not going to be shape up to be uh, anything crazy although going into 2022 I, I i didn't have that high of expectations i feel like we got a much better year than the last two which maybe isn't saying much uh we are going to be doing a show soon on uh the 10 best films of 2022 so we'll be doing that countdown actually i think we're supposed to do that countdown once we're we're done with you here mario Ooh. so uh, or, or or yeah we'll, maybe we'll make it a very like brief concise one hour show <laughs> it'll be a late night yeah. So on that note, we'll we'll close out the program. And uh, Mario, is there anything you want to promote? I, were you talking about uh, doing a tour soon? Yeah, I'm probably going to. Uh, well, I actually had the an immediate response from a promoter in Philadelphia. I was just hitting up random random venues, and this guy was uh, the most down, like right off the bat. So I'll probably be heading to the East Coast. And I would like to figure out a way to just maybe do like a five, four or five show run and uh, maybe get all the way out to New York. So I think I'll probably head east first um, in the new year or this year. I don't know. I don't know when, but maybe kick it off in um, maybe kick it off in Philly. I don't know. I got to talk. I've been talking to this promoter and uh, I think he's going to help me set this thing up. So. I'm gonna, that would be super dope. Gonna, gonna, yeah, if you do New way. York, I'll come out and I'll come out and see you. So that'll yeah, be. Yeah, we'll do we'll do something. We'll film some stuff. Hell yeah, dude! Let's do that. We got to do a follow up to Middle American. Yeah, I got to uh, come up with a solid track. Mm -hmm. I got a track. I got a track in my pocket that should be okay to start off the year. Nice. So, well, see. I, I that'll be something to look forward to. Uh, everybody should go follow you on on. Where do you want to promote most? Is Twitter or Instagram? Because you you kind of have like a more subtle, uh, you know, activity on on Twitter as opposed to IG. I feel like. Yeah, Instagram. I'm probably spending the most time on. So it's just MC Mario Cuomo, and uh, yeah, I've got all my fucking got all my links and everything over there. And uh, I don't know what else I might try to squeeze out this year. I think I might. I'm trying to find like a solid, a solid writing partner just because I think in the past I've always uh, came up with the best stuff with uh, just working with another person, not too many people, but maybe just one other person that I could uh, bounce ideas off of as far as, uh, you know, when we get into songwriting. So hopefully I, I worked with uh, this dude on one track and that'll probably be the first one of the year so maybe i keep doing stuff with him maybe we start like a side band thing and then 
the uh, the last the the dreaded last Orwell's album will come out some point this year, and I hope it's uh, I hope it comes out. You know, everybody's happy in my band about the way that it gets released, but um, we will see. I like the way that it sounds. Um, I sent it around to some people, and uh, I'm happy with it. And I, it'd be cool with me if that shit just came out tomorrow. But I'm um, going to try to get it out in a way where we could at least make what we put into it back. I think the whole record cost like five grand, which was one of the cheapest records we ever made. And uh, so that'll come out this year. Don't know when, but um, I'm, I'm still happy with that record. Maybe not as, maybe not as like gung ho crazy about it as when we first, you know, completed it. But um, I'm still really proud of uh, how it turned out, and uh, people still like it. Well, that's super dope. Um, yeah, we'll we'll definitely have to have you back on whenever that drops to to promote the release of the the final album. There, that's that's exciting shit. So yeah, that'll be nice. Yeah. Um, all right, Mario. Thank you so much for coming on the the program tonight and thank giving you guys. Your, your selections that was a very good haul uh all right that has been movies for this week thank you for listening